Welcome back to the Endo and Fertility Space channel. In today's video, I'm talking about a wildly popular supplement in the endometriosis space. It's a supplement we have research for, which makes it one of the few tools we can pull from in our endometriosis management toolkit. The research we do have is also quite profound with one study showing the potential for endometrioma size reduction, pain improvements, and spontaneous pregnancies. So what supplement am I talking about? Can you guess? If you guess NAC, you're absolutely correct. In today's video, I'm breaking down what NAC is, how to take it, what the research says, who should approach NAC supplementation with caution, and some other important considerations. If you haven't already, please give this video a like, share it with a friend, and hit that subscribe button. Now on to the video. So what is NAC and how does it work? NAC stands for N-acetylcysteine. It's a supplement derived from the amino acid L-cysteine, and it has long been used to treat acetaminophen overdose and to loosen thick mucus. Generally speaking, people use NAC as a supplement as it acts as a precursor to glutathione, helping the body handle oxidative stress and inflammation. Because it's a precursor to glutathione, your body's master inflammation fighter, it's also used for its anti-inflammatory effects, which include reducing pro-inflammatory chemicals, which we find elevated as people with endometriosis like interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. These are among many of the pro-inflammatory chemicals that present in high amounts in women with endometriosis. Speaking of endometriosis, it's a chronic inflammatory and estrogen dependent condition. Oxidative stress, immune dysregulation, and inflammation happen around endometriosis lesions and endometriomas, making any tool that targets inflammation a possibly helpful one. So what does the research say about NAC and endometriosis? Let's start off by talking about the human data. What happens when actual people with endometriosis take NAC? Let's first discuss the Italian observational cohort. One of the most frequently cited studies is an Italian observational cohort on women with ovarian endometriomas. Women with ovarian endometriomas either took NAC, 600 milligrams three times a day for three consecutive days per week for three months, or were in a comparison group that did not receive NAC. The researchers found that in the NAC group, endometrioma size slightly decreased on average, while in the non-treatment group, cysts grew over the same three month period. Fewer participants also required surgery and many participants also reported improved pain symptoms. And some even had spontaneous pregnancies during or after NAC treatment. An important note here is that this was not a randomized placebo controlled trial. It's a well done observational cohort, but still observational. A newer prospective study looked at women with endometriosis, including those with endometriomas taking NAC. The protocol was very similar, 600 milligrams, three times daily, three days per week for three months. Results showed significant improvements in painful menstrual periods, chronic pelvic pain, and pain during or after intercourse, a reduction in endometrioma diameter, and improvements in CA125 levels in many participants. Again, promising, but still not a large randomized control trial. One study also looked at NAC in combination with other supplements, so specifically NAC paired with alpha lipoic acid paired with bromelain, and these were combined and provided to women with endometriosis. This study found that women taking the combo had a significant reduction in endometriosis associated pelvic pain and a reduced need for rescue pain medications like NSAIDs. Because it was a combo product, we can't say how much of the effect was NAC alone, but it supports the idea that antioxidant strategies, including NAC, may help with endo-related pain. In animal models and cell studies, NAC has been shown to reduce proliferation and invasiveness of endometriotic cells. NAC also showed anti-inflammatory and anti-proliferative action, which is anti-growth promoting action on endometriosis tissue. These are important mechanistic clues, but remember mice don't equal humans. Early lab and animal studies suggest it might help, but that doesn't prove it works in real human people yet. When we zoom out, recent evidence reviews say NAC appears promising for reducing pain and endometrioma size, and it may support fertility outcomes, but most data are from small cohorts and non-randomized studies. NAC is not yet included in major international endometriosis treatment guidelines as a standard therapy. 
NAC is not a cure and not a standalone replacement for surgery or other management options, but it's a reasonable adjunct therapy to explore, especially for people looking for less hormone heavy strategies or for support pre or post operatively. So what about NAC dosing for endometriosis pain and inflammation? In the endometriosis slash endometrioma studies, the most common protocol has been 600 milligrams of NAC three times per day, totaling 1800 milligrams per day, taken on three consecutive days per week for three months. This might look like 600 milligrams at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, only on say Friday, Saturday, and Sunday each week for 12 weeks. The intermittent dosing, three days on, four days off, is a bit unique to endometriosis research. It's not how NAC is always used in other conditions. Outside of endometriosis studies, general supplemental doses for antioxidant support are often 600 to 1200 milligrams per day, commonly split into two to three doses. For chronic pain conditions more broadly, a systemic review of NAC and chronic pain found that doses used across different conditions ranged roughly from 600 milligrams to 2400 milligrams per day, though not specifically all in endometriosis. Dosing should always be based on your individual needs and tolerance. So let's talk a little bit about who should not take NAC. NAC is often described as safe, but there are important exceptions and nuances. Common side effects, especially at higher doses, can include things like nausea, vomiting, abdominal discomfort, mm -hmm. diarrhea, mm -hmm. headaches, fatigue, unpleasant sulfur smell or taste, skin rashes, or itching. If you experience these symptoms when taking NAC, consult with your prescribing practitioner. Some more serious conditions and contraindications include asthma or reactive airway disease. NAC, especially in inhaled forms, can sometimes worsen bronchospasm or wheezing. Oral NAC still warrants caution in people with unstable asthma as well. The second consideration is with concurrent nitroglycerin use. NAC can enhance the vasodilating and blood thinning effects of nitroglycerin, increasing the risk of low blood pressure and severe headaches. The next more concerning consideration is bleeding or clotting issues or using blood thinners. Some data suggests NAC may slow blood clotting or affect platelet function, which may increase bleeding risk, particularly if you are also on anticoagulants or antiplatelet medications. Because NAC can cause irritation to the stomach lining, it may aggravate active ulcers or very sensitive GI tracts. Another consideration is pregnancy and breastfeeding. NAC is used acutely in hospitals for acetaminophen overdose in pregnancy, but that's short term and medically supervised. We don't have strong evidence for long term high dose NAC supplementation for pregnant or breastfeeding women with endometriosis. So this absolutely needs personalized clearance from your doctor. The next more serious consideration is in sulfur sensitive individuals. NAC is a sulfurous supplement. If you have or suspect sulfur sensitivity, you might not have the best response to supplementation. The next important consideration is if you have an upcoming surgery. Because of potential effects on bleeding and platelets, it's wise to tell your surgical team about NAC and ask when to stop before any planned operation or surgical procedure. What are some practical nuances of NAC supplementation? So to wrap up our video today, here are some practical points and nuances you can walk through. Quality matters, so look for NAC from reputable brands that do third-party testing for purity and potency. I like Integrative Therapeutics, Pure Encapsulations, Designs for Health, and Bioclinic Naturals brands. Timing and taking with food. NAC can be taken with or without food, but many people tolerate it better with a small snack to reduce nausea. Start low, go slow. Even though studies often jump to 1800 milligrams per day, in real life, it may be more comfortable to start at a lower dose and build up, especially if a person is sensitive. Track symptoms and cycles. Assess for symptom improvements in pain scores, GI symptoms, energy levels, and any changes in cycle length or bleeding pattern. Use NAC as part of a bigger picture. Pair NAC with anti-inflammatory nutrition, gut support, evidence-based pain management, and appropriate medical or surgical management. NAC is a tool, not the entire toolbox. I hope today's video helped you better understand NAC, how to supplement with it if you're a good candidate for supplementing with NAC, and some additional important considerations. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried NAC and found it helpful. And before you go, please give this video a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.